from the bottom, all right? Okay, Exodus 32, verse 1 says, Now when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him, Come, make us gods that shall go before us, for as for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has, happened, what has become of him. What I want to talk to you today about is, is creating a false image of God. Let me see if I can't paint this picture for you. Uh, Moses had just, he was up on Mount Sinai and he'd been there for 40 days and 40 nights. And there he was in the presence of the Lord and the Lord was giving him instruction on the law and the commandments. And before he went to the mountaintop, he had instructed Aaron to take care of the responsibilities there back at camp among the Israelite uh, people. And he had told the Israelites, he told the people there that if you have any problems, any situations, to go to Aaron. Well, this is what they were doing in verse 32 here. See, the problem that they were having, though, is they were having a problem with impatience. They were impatient on waiting for Moses to come down off the mountain. So they decided to make for themselves a false god, something they could see, something that they could touch, something that they could mold into the image that they wanted it to be. When I read that, uh, it made me think, is that so different from a lot of people today? Let me get a little more personal. Is that so different from us in certain ways? Now, we don't melt down gold and create these images to worship. But we do want to mold God into the image that we want Him to be sometimes. You know, I used to think that an idol was something that you put before God. But my idea kind of changed on that a little bit once I was preparing this and, and studying for this. I realize that an idol isn't something that you put before God. It's something that you put in place of God. That's an idol. I want to pick up here in verse 2 real quick. It says, And Aaron said to them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, your sons, your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand. And he fashioned it with an engraving tool and made a molded calf. Now, I know this isn't a cow, okay? I can't tell the difference. It's a horse. <laughs> I was raised on a farm, so I know it's all I can find. So just picture this as being a molded calf of gold, okay? And then he says, they, it says here in Scripture that they said that this is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. What just happened here? Well, what happened here is they just took God off the throne of their lives. And they replaced it with an image, with a false God. They replaced the living God with a fake God who couldn't move. It couldn't even move. It just sat there while they built altars for it. They bowed down before it. And they gave it all the credit for what God, the one true God, had done for them. And you see, they, couldn't, they, couldn't, they could see this, okay? They could touch this. They could position it how they wanted it. They could face it north, east, west, south. However they wanted to, to use this God, they would be able to do that. This cannot bring them. But the thing is, though, is this, this is something that they could understand. This is something that they could comprehend. But this, this couldn't deliver them from their enemies. This, this couldn't lead them to the promised land, which God had promised for them. This, this may have been of great value in its physical sense, in a material sense, but in a spiritual sense, it was worthless. It was worthless. They had replaced the one true God with an image that they wanted their God to be. They had molded their God, shaped their God, and created the God that fit them the best. It fit their circumstances, their situations. It didn't demand anything from them. It didn't call them to... To, to be anything more than what they wanted to be. I mean, that was the perfect God. But yet there was no power in that God. There was no might in that God. And you know, but my question for us today is, is, that, is, are we so much different than they are? I mean, we struggle with questions like, like how can a merciful God send someone to hell? And we struggle with questions like, you know, how can a good God allow good people 
to go through bad things. And we struggle with questions like how can a, 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 a God who rules and reigns on high humble himself and come down and dwell among men, live amongst us, give his life for such a person as us? So we put these limitations on God. And we mold God and we shape him and shift him into what we want him to be. Let me tell you, God is far greater than we could ever imagine. He is far, far more powerful than we could ever determine in our own understanding. And sometimes I think we spend so much time trying to mold God into an image that we can understand that we miss the fact that God is beyond our understanding. We will never know the full glory of the living God until we are in His presence for eternity. The psalmist wrote in Psalms 145.3, says, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and His greatness is unsearchable. And Paul says over in Romans chapter 11, verse 33, it says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are His judgments and His ways past finding out. Then Isaiah 55, verse 8 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Listen, some things are just going to be beyond our understanding. And that's why it takes faith. We have to have faith to believe God's Word for what it is. And if it says it, if it says it in this book, then we believe it to be true. Completely and totally accurate. And if we take from it, if we want to try to manipulate it and change it into something it's not, then it's turned to idol worship. We're not worshiping the one true living God. Because that God is the God of this Bible. There is no other God. God says, for I am God and there is no other. It's what His Word tells us. That we can trust in. I want to turn just real quick over to Romans chapter 1. I'm starting with verse 21. Paul is instructing the church in Rome here and he's, and he's telling them, about a situation like what we're talking about today, about worshiping false idols and, and how we, 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 we trade the truth for a lie. And here in verse 21, he says, because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God. See, that's the difference, church. We can say we know God all day long, but our God deserves glory. He deserves glory from our lives. We give ourselves sacrificially to Him. Everything, every aspect of our lives, we are to lay down at the foot of the cross of, of Jesus Christ and surrender our lives to Him because He deserves it. He is worthy of it. And then it says, Nor will, were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts. And their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. What does that mean? Where they're taking God who is incorruptible means He's unchanging. We cannot change, we cannot manipulate who He is. But they were taking that image and they were exchanging it for an image that they could change. Something that they could, they could mold into, uh, that would be, that would, uh, you know, it, it would cause them to, uh, to, to accept the, the things of this guy because this guy didn't demand anything from them. And it says here, it says, And birds and four-footed animals and creeping things, therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, to exchange the truth of God for a lie, and worship and serve the creature rather than the Creator who is blessed forever. See, we serve a living God. A God who is incorruptible. And you know what? We serve a loving God. We serve a God of mercy and grace. And he was, He's demonstrated that grace for us by giving His Son to die on the cross for us. But we also serve a mighty God. A powerful God. A God who is far above our understanding. We will never get to that place of full, complete understanding of who God is. Moses, over in chapter 33 of Exodus, he's, 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 he's asking God to show, to give Him clarity of, of who is going to go before them leading them, guiding them to the promised land. And he tells them, he says, God, I just want to see your glory. Can you show me your glory? I want to see your glory. And God answers him. He says, you cannot handle the fullness of my face. You cannot handle the fullness of my glory. 
But I tell you what, Moses, I'm going I'm to set you aside over here. I'm going to put my hand over you, and I'm going to pass before you. You can watch as I'm passing by, but that's all you can handle. We will never fully comprehend the fullness of God's glory. But you know what? We can get a taste of it bit by bit every day. And we can find out more and more about it as we read God's scripture. And we put our faith and our trust in this book. God reveals himself to us through his word. Now, I'm not trying to discourage us to seek out who God is. I mean, man, I, absolutely not. That's my heart's desire. I want to know God. I want to know Him more today than I did yesterday. And I want to know, know Him more tomorrow than I do today. I want to grow in my faith and my relationship with the Lord because that's what it's about. But as soon as we start taking our ideas of who we think God should be and trying to mold Him into an image that suits us, we are in trouble. Do you think God's going to honor that? Do you think He's going to bless that? No. See, God is God. He is incorruptible. He is unchanging. And you know, if we truly knew who God was, and would we want to change Him? Absolutely not. God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, He breathed life into us. He's brought us to salvation through Jesus Christ, through faith in Jesus Christ. I mean, God, He has not wholly held anything back from us. But yet, these people... Because their leader had walked away for a little bit, and they got impatient, and they were afraid, you know, what were the, did he just leave us here? Are we just stranded here? Man, we need a guide. We need somebody to give us some direction and lead us out of this place. And they turned to an image. I mean, they had witnessed the mighty hand of God on how many occasions? I mean, they were traveling and they were being led by a cloud in the day and a pillar of fire by night. I mean, what, what more do you want? I mean, how much more proof do you need of who God is? If that's the thing, we want evidence. We want, we want to be able to see it, touch it, taste it, feel it. We want to be able to experience it. Listen, it's not always about that. There are times when I've had very real experiences with the Lord, where He has touched my heart in very big ways, but there's also been some times when I felt very distant from God. But I knew that He was still there. I knew that He was still present. And I had my faith to lean on. That in despite of the fact that I felt like God had... Had, had left me alone for a while, I knew that he was still there. See, these people got discouraged because the presence of the Lord wasn't there with them in the midst of their, of their circumstances and situations. But you know what? Sometimes we have to walk through our trials and tribulations in order to know and experience who God is. That he is a God of deliverance. Yeah. That he will come and he will deliver us from those situations, but sometimes we have to walk through them. Yeah. And you know, and Moses knew what it took. I mean, if you look at verse 33, it talks about Moses separating himself from the camp. He sets up a tent outside the camp. And that is his place where he designated that was his meeting place with the Lord. And he called that place the tabernacle of meeting. And when I read that, I was like, you know, man, we can learn a lot from that. We can learn a lot from that. Because sometimes we too have to separate ourselves and get along with God so that God can truly speak to our hearts. But far too often what we do is we, we put ourselves in these, in these busy situations where we're just blowing and going. And, and the whole time we're missing what God is doing over here because we think he's at work over here. But really what he is is he's at work right here. And he was there all along. And we were missing it. See, the Israelites missed it. God was at work from the time he delivered them from Egypt. Or even before that. But they, they didn't recognize him to be who, who he was. So they created their own image of God. They created this, this fake God. This God that they could touch. They could manipulate. I mean, they could, this God could do whatever they wanted to do. And you know, that's the thing. Is I feel like that Christians today, a lot of us, have fallen into that. We've fallen into that. 
where we think that we have this corruptible God that we can change and mold and shift to fit our needs. God is worried and concerned for our needs. God, the Scripture is clear about that. He will take care of what we need. But you're not going to be able to manipulate Him to do your will. Nor should we even want to. I mean, I've learned a long time ago, it's better to be inside God's will than outside of God's will. It's a lot better right here. <laughs> and I have spent my time running, I'm telling you. I have spent my time running from God's will and purpose for my life. And I'm telling you, it wasn't to the point where I've got to the place of, God, okay, I'm yours. <laughs> do what you want. That's not the... Not, it was all... You know, I can look back on my past and say, God, man, look at all that wasted time. When God is saying, no, I use that time too. Hallelujah. I use that time to grow you, Randy. And He uses those times to grow us and strengthen us in our walk and our faith with Him. Because He is faithful no matter what, even when we're not. Amen. We serve a good God. We serve an awesome, a mighty, powerful God who is far beyond our understanding. We will never ever fully comprehend the greatness of God. But I tell you what, I'm going to spend my time learning. I'm going to spend my time seeking Him. It didn't deter Moses to seek God's face. He cried out, God, show me your glory. And God gave him a glimpse. And I'm telling you, church, that's all we need. Just a glimpse. Just a, a glimpse of the fullness of His glory. That alone would change our lives forever. Amen. And we would be changed for the better. Amen. Changed for the better. So my question today then, church, is what is your image of God? And then my next question is does that image line up with the image that's given to us through God's Word? And now you determine, does your image need to change? Or are you going to try to change God's image? Because I'm telling you, church, we were saved. And we were saved with the, for the reason and the purpose to be transformed, to make, be made new. That's what the Bible tells us. That the old passes away, behold, all things are made new. We have become a new creation in Christ. Meaning that God is changing us from the inside out. Yes. And we're becoming more like Jesus Christ on a daily basis because we're seeking His face, His will, and His purpose, and we have His Spirit living in us. The assurance of our salvation, God's Holy Spirit. And that transforming Spirit does its work in our inner bodies, and it creates what God had planned for us from the beginning that, that was corrupted by sin. God takes and He transforms us and He makes us new. But He only does that when we can realize who He is. When we come to that realization that God is God and we are not. When we can truly lay down our lives before the Lord and say, God, I surrender my heart, my will, my purpose, my soul, my mind, everything about me, I surrender to You and I lay it down at the foot of Jesus. That's what the answer is. Amen. So if you've, if you've thought God to be this thing, but now you realize that, that He's not, listen, get on board with Him. Get on board with what He's doing. Okay? Search out His will, His purpose for your life, and surrender to it. And let God do that transforming work in your hearts and your minds. That you can become that new creation that He created you to be in the first place. Amen? Come on, please stand.